allegiance? On this side, no. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Andrew Obanowitz. Mm. Tim Neville. Here. Mary Ann Turner. Here. Kelly Davis. Here. Charlie Masterberti. Here. Rich Stroney. Here. Rob Kwasnicki. Here. Fire evacuation notice. There are two exits to the building in case of an emergency. Immediately to your rear and out the double doors and out onto the sidewalk. Over here to my left, your right. Go out the door, take a left, and down the stairs out into the parking lot. Town attorney's report. I think we all got it. Uh, old business. Commissioner Turner, could you read the uh, docket, docket number, number LNDCV 21614300S128 Moody Road, remanded back to ZBA to determine status of non conforming used truck terminal? Okay. One second, please. I second. Not yet. Oh. Since the remand matter was tabled at the January meeting, I need a motion to remove the remand uh, a matter from the table to continue the discussion. So okay. moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor by a show of hands. Okay. Although this is not a hearing, we will continue our discussion of the January meeting, and the remand issue will be decided by motion at the end of the meeting, or towards the end of the meeting. Uh, since several of our ZBA members were not able to attend the January meeting, I'm going to ask Attorney Ellsberg to update us regarding the scope and the reasons for the remand. Could you do that, please? Certainly. Uh, for the record, Maria Elston, um, as we discussed last time, the judge's decision in June of 2022 found that there was a truck terminal. However, the issue that the judge could not review was that having to do with whether or not the truck terminal constituted a legal non-conforming use. So that had to come back to the ZBA for that kind of a determination. And when we met last time, we talked about the scope of that. I sent a memo to the board in, on February 8th, basically outlining what the limits of that was. The, Scope of the remand is very narrow, and basically the process for making the determination about a non-conforming non use is that, first of all, the board should review whether the truck terminal use was legal prior to the time it was made illegal by the passage of the relevant zoning regulations cited by your zoning enforcement officer. If you determine that the terminal was not legal prior to the adoption of the regs, the ZBA would deny the appeal. In other words, uphold the ZEO's order. However, if the ZBA finds that the terminal was legal prior to the adoption of the regulations, then the board would have to determine whether the use as it what is legal was a legal intensification and therefore permissible or an illegal expansion. Okay. And in terms of the scope of the remand, the judge's decision on page 12 makes it very clear that did w what you need to look at was whether the predecessors in title legally utilized commercial vehicles and interstate trucking before the passage of the regs, specifically 6.20. The plaintiff does have the burden of proof, and there was evidence presented by the plaintiff as well as by the ZEO with respect to the prior use of the property. You asked for a review of the truck terminal definitions. I believe that that was sent to you by uh, the director of planning. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to try to assist you. But I think that you, you covered pretty much the full scope of what the discussion was going to be last time around, and that still stands today with the exception of making a finding as to whether or not it's a legal nonconforming use. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Then why don't we move on? It, if
if I could, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, Derek Donnelly, again, on behalf of I'm the, sorry. I, I, go, go right ahead. I, sure. I no no see problem you. at all. Um, but you were just, uh, you just discussed communication and direction that you were given from Attorney Elsden. Uh, if that was a, a memo from counsel, it's now been discussed in public session, meaning that any privileged communication has been waived. So I would just ask that we continue that so we have an opportunity to review it. We have not seen the memo that gave you the direction you've just been informed of. Um, my client, you know, we were in the middle of an open discussion mm -hmm. on this issue. If you were given privileged, privileged communication, the privilege is only maintained to the extent that it's not discussed in public. It's now been discussed in public, and we'd like an opportunity to review it. Yeah, it isn't. It isn't. As far as I was concerned, it wasn't privileged. It was simply outlining what had already been discussed. So, I mean, it's entirely, as far as I'm concerned, it's there's nothing terribly different than what we had talked about in January. It was just outlining it. But we, I, are you asking for a continuance? Do you want us to table this again? Yeah, I'd like an opportunity to review the memorandum that that you were provided and that was just discussed. That's fine. I make a motion that we table this oh. till next meeting. Mr. Mr. Donnelly, if we give you a copy of this, it's pretty skinny right now. Perhaps we could just go on to our next item and then come back to this. I, I, if that's I, what I, my impression of our discussion at the last hearing was that. If there was any communication to the board that I would have been given an opportunity to review it. And that's exactly what happened when you sent the email. So from my point of view, we see the email, we see the public packet that's provided, and we review those things to prepare for the meeting. If there's something else that's been provided and we haven't had the opportunity to prepare, I don't think it's fair to, to give me five minutes to look at it right now. I Mr. Chairman, I don't think it's an issue for us. If he's okay to put, to put it off another month, we'll put it off another I month. second the motion. Any discussion? All, 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 all those in favor, raise your hand. Three. I, didn't hear I can't vote. Okay. Uh, okay. So we'll... Uh, Hold on to your paperwork. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate it. We'll put this off until the next Bye, meeting. Maria. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Maria. You're welcome. We'll see you next month. Possibly. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the second item, which is the um, uh, item B. If you could read that, please, uh, Madam Secretary. ZBA 2021-0208-69 Broadbrook Road, bond release of $25,000 under stipulated agreement, Town of Enfield versus Jarmark Farms, LLC. My understanding, Mr. Richelli, is that you have done all the work on this one in terms of uh, the paperwork. If you could uh, look at uh, the stipulated agreement and give us an update on its the compliance with that particular document. Yeah, the stipulated agreement was that the, uh, the structure be removed to that point where it came into 50 feet back from the front property line. Um, as such, a, a bond was taken as part of the agreement. And... They provided a site plan proposal prior to the removal. And upon completion of the removal, they submitted a as-built, final as-built, and a zoning compliance form. So as of this time, they are in compliance with the approval under the stipulated agreement. Very good. Anybody on the commission have any questions for uh, Mr. Michelli, the CEO? No. no? I have a motion, please. I have I make a motion to uh, approve the release of the bond in the amount of $25,000 submitted under the agreement for the project at 69 Broadbrook Road, map 102, lot 0048, Jarmuk Farms, LLC, Jarmuk Realty owner. Second. Made and seconded. Any, any discussion? Uh, can I have a roll call, please? 
Tim Neville. Here. Yes. Mary Ann Turner. Yes. Kelly Davis. Yes. Charlie Master Birdie. Yes. Rich Droney. Yes. Okay. Very good. Moving on to the uh, next item on the agenda. I need uh, you to hold one second. Absolutely. The paperwork's not done yet. Um, so, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Kwasnicki made the motion. Yes. Who made the second? Richard. Unanimous. I just want to formally announce that uh, Rich Droney is going to the he's an alternate. He's going to be taking uh, the place of uh, Andrew Branowitz. No. No. Well, that's right. Yep. Very good. Exactly. Just follow the flow. <laughs> Number okay. eight. You're Ready? Yep. Uh, ZBA 2023-0207-9 Manning Road Appeal of ZEO Cease and Desist Order regarding Section 3.30.13 Commercial Vehicles and Section 10.10.2 .10 Parking Standards. Christopher Lat Latik Lataki. Lataki, Applicant Owner, Map 34, <laughs> Lot 8, R33 Zone. Sorry. Mr. Lataki. No worries. It happens. You've given us your name. Could you give us your address, please? Oh, sorry, I do have to ask you to speak up, too, because I have a hearing impairment, so... Not a problem. Echoes. <laughs> Your address, please? Uh, 9 Manning Road. Very good. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. All right. Um, basically, the reason the appeal, uh, I do know that there are two outstanding issues, one of which uh, have to do with parking, uh, exceeding of parking, allowed parking in a residential uh, mm -hmm. dwelling, and then also the, the issue of commercial vehicles. Uh, the four of the vehicles presently or temporarily stored there are registered to my business, Automotive. Uh, they're there because I just recently uh, obtained a new building in Enfield uh, and the address of 9 Moody Road. Uh, the lease is, unfortunately, the building, uh, due to building inspections and whatnot, is not ready yet, so I was not able to move those vehicles prior to this appeal hearing. Uh, those vehicles will be moved uh, as far as uh, to the new location, which should to the best of my knowledge, rectify both issues, the parking of a, of a commercial vehicle uh, on the property and also the in excess of six parking spaces. And I wanted to find out if it was possible to get a continuance of this uh, of a short period of time to make those moves uh, prior to, so that way I could bring the property into compliance or find out what the procedure is for that. It's just a matter of waiting until, it's not gonna be ready until about uh, the 15th of March. I have a signed lease. It's just waiting on a couple building inspection things, and I have military duty in between the time of the 11th, or the 10th and the or 6th and the 11th, so I'm not going to be back in town until about the 12th. And it's something that I have no problem rectifying. Uh, it was just we had lost our commercial building suddenly, and that was why some of the vehicles were yet to be moved over to the commercial property, and we had just obtained the new property as of uh, in between the time that I filed the appeal on this and today. So I need to find out exactly what uh, my guidelines are for getting a continuance to okay. bring it into compliance. Turn it over to Mr. Shelley. We can allow a period of time between now and the next meeting for him to come into compliance. That's we all. Need, do we table it or? You can table it to the next meeting and at that point uh, I'll check the property and have contact with Mr. Lataki to ensure that it uh, comes into compliance. I make a motion to table. Second. Made by uh, Mr. Turner and seconded by um, Kelly. Any discussion? Very good. Uh, all, in favor. Never, uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Done. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Members, yeah. Hang on to your paperwork. I know. Okay. Moving right along here. Um, I'll wait till you get done. Okay. All done. ZBA 
23-0209, 33 Spear Avenue, appeal of the ZEO's notice of violation regarding section 4.60.10.2, chicken slash fowl on residential property, Mark Michael Scalzo, applicant owner, map 20, lot 51, R33 zone. Mr. Scalzo, your name and your address, please. Mickey Scalzo, 33 Spear F. Okay. Is the button, the red button on there? Yeah. Okay, just pull it a little bit closer to yourself if you would, sure. please. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, the floor is yours to tell us your... Uh, Thanks. Uh, uh, I had originally written about 20 pages to read to you guys, but I've brought that down to about four. Okay. Uh, my name is Mickey Scalzo, and I'm here on behalf of my pets. I live at 33 Spear Ave here in Enfield. I own a local small business here and have been running it for over 11 years in Thompsonville. I've worked with our community here during those years and have helped the town on multiple projects, such as helping to pay for our fishing derbies and creating artwork for the kids during the Halloween activities. I also worked for a while on the Thompsonville Revitalization Committee. I purchased my home on Spear Ave just before COVID became a national worry. And shortly after that, my business was closed by the state to protect my neighbors. During the time of our closure, the bills didn't stop. I had just gotten myself into a mortgage and the store's rent was also due each month. Without any income or social interaction, I started to become worried, as we all did, about how I was gonna pay the bills and how we would even eat. It was because of that uh, that I started speaking with my close friends who mentioned getting some pets because I live alone and it would bring me some peace at home. Uh, after weighing my options and doing a lot of research on chickens, I found that they not only are amazing pets, but also give a lot back to the house. I head over to Tractor Supply, which remained open during the closures here in town, and found that they sold chickens there. I spent about an hour with the manager who informed me that owning them was simple. They were very easy to take care of. Uh, they helped in a lot of ways around the property, and they were indeed legal in Enfield. I didn't go looking for fine print. I didn't go to the town hall and ask permission. Um, when you purchase chickens, you can't purchase just one. You have to purchase six. They're, they come as a flock. They're very social animals. Uh, as a general rule, most people don't keep fewer than six chickens. And that day I took home six baby chickens that required constant care. And I grew them into the wonderful birds that they are today. Um, through my time owning them, they've taken on their own personalities, their own feelings. And every day that I spend with them is a joy. Taking care of them all this time and never have any issues at all has helped me to gain mental stability, self-reliance, self-worth. Through the years of taking care of them, I've been lucky enough to sometimes have excess eggs. I've never used this as a business. Um, I've never sold the eggs. I've always given them away to the neighbors. Their environment, as you've seen from the pictures that I had admitted earlier to the staff, they have a luxury home in my backyard. It's an extra, extra large coop. It was placed into the rear southwest corner of my yard, and it's covered on two sides by a six-foot fence. Um, it can't be seen by the neighbors. The space they have is more than adequate to live and thrive in. Excuse me. Okay. I, I heard it too, but I was I'm just going to keep going. going. Just find a way to okay. Um, Are we all set? Their their coop also takes the tiniest portion of my backyard. It's chickens do not require acreage. This is a fact. This is information that's readily available online. You can ask any farmer worldwide; they'll all give the same answer. Uh, about a month ago, I let the girls out to, into the run early morning, as I do every day. Uh, they and then I went off to work. Uh, came home as I always do. Expecting them all there, waiting for treats and water. Unfortunately, I noticed one of them missing. Uh, I was distraught and I searched the neighborhood. I even asked a passing cruiser if he had seen the chick and he said he didn't, but he'd keep an eye out. Uh, a few hours later, I was notified that a neighbor had found her, approached her, picked her up and brought her home. Uh, and then he went online to find out who was missing a chicken. Uh, we were put in touch almost immediately through our town forum. And I ran from work to go and get her. We brought her back home. Her sisters were happy to see her. Uh, and they all got special dinner that night. 
Um, months have gone on since then, uh, and never an issue until 5 January, uh, when one of my birds was once again spooked in, in the yard, probably from a hawk or an eagle flying overhead, uh, and jumped the fence and landed in my neighbor's yard. I didn't notice it right away. Uh, I usually check on them hourly when I'm home, but I didn't notice for a couple of hours. When I did check, I saw Laverne had jumped over. Laverne's her name. Uh, so I just quietly went over to the neighbor's yard, picked her up, brought her back home, put her back in the coop, back in with her sisters. Um, about a week after that, I received a certified letter from the town letting me know that my neighbor had made a formal complaint that my pet was in their yard. The letter went on to say that I was in violation of two zoning issues regarding the pets. The first being that the coop should be located 10 feet from any abutting property. The second, that I just didn't have enough land. It went on to say that I had 30 days to remove the birds or be fined $150 per day. I don't know how any of you would react being told that the amount of land is going to decide whether or not you can keep your pets, but that hurt. This isn't about horses. It's not about cows. This isn't about the family down the street who has six dogs that are constantly out chasing kids off the bus. It's about six small, noiseless, scentless, kind, gentle, and timid birds who have done nothing wrong except be fearful of a bird in the sky above them on one occasion. So I'm asking the board for a variance. I'm asking to be able to keep my birds on my property as I have since they were born. I'm asking for understanding with the facts. They're considered family to me. They provide me with mental stability. They give back to my property by eating the mites, ticks, and other small bugs in the yard. They provide me with sometimes two meals a day. They eat the weeds in my yard. They provide lessons for my friend's children when I'm able to teach them about self-sustainability and it also teaches them responsibility for themselves and their own pets. Their coop produces the best fertilizer my garden could possibly get, and there's far less food waste going into public fills because they eat all the scraps from the house. Along with what I've said, I have a petition with over 520 signatures that I've gotten over the past few weeks. Um, I have a handwritten letter uh, from a neighbor who couldn't make it tonight, but who also agrees with my fight to keep them. I have people behind me who agree that keeping my chickens is beneficial for self-reliance and helps to keep the neighborhood safer. These are a lot of my neighbors behind me. Um, I have a signed letter from my therapist who asked professionally for leniency in this situation. And lastly, I have the support of many other neighbors who didn't even know I kept my birds until this meeting was brought to their attention. I'm hoping that after all this and all the media provided uh, that you'll come to the conclusion in this case that these are not farm animals. These are my pets. And I'd like to keep them as a part of my family and in my yard. Anything else? No. no. Any questions from the uh, commission? If I may, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, is there anything um, obstructing the ability to put their pen 10 feet from the setbacks that are required at least there, that there's part. nothing to stop that no the reason that they were put this close to the fence was because they can't be seen if i move them 10 feet away from the fence which is 10 feet from the side and 10 feet from the back they actually will come up onto a hill where they'll be seen by everyone so that was the whole purpose of me putting them in that back corner because they couldn't be seen Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, excuse me, Rick. I should have had uh, the CEO speak next. So go right ahead. To bring us up to date. That's okay. All right. So we, the, the planning office did receive a complaint. Uh, and in regards to the regulations, it was deliberated uh, a number of years on chicken regulations. And finally... Yeah, it was last updated in 2018. Before, finally... Before COVID, yeah. Excuse me, sir. Just, uh, sure, let, sure. Is it your talk? Finally, in 2018, they determined what the regulations would be. And part of the decision on that was that each yard that uh, wanted to have chickens had to be a minimum of a quarter acre. Uh, Mr. Scalzo's yard is 0.117 of an acre, which comes out to 7,405 square feet, as opposed to what's required at 10,890 for a quarter acre. Uh, the regulations are what they are. Uh, 
Mr. Scalzo was advised that this board does not do variances and in a case of this matter, he's appealing the, the uh, notice of violation. Uh, any change to the regulations has to be done through the Planning and Zoning Commission if a, a change is to be made. So um, a notice of violation was issued on it simply because it's in violation of the regulations. Okay. So if I'm hearing you correctly, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission is the only one who can make that accept or make any kind of change? Planning and Zoning is the only one that can change the text and the regulations. Okay. This is merely for an appeal for the violation itself. Correct. I, I, an exception. No, I understand. I, I guess it, uh, if you're looking, what you're looking for, I understand what you're looking for. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, the problem is that we're not, not empowered to make that change. We legally, we're not just, asking for any changes. I'm asking for. We have to make a variance. We can't. We can't. No. Pardon me? We're not here to make a variance. No, we're not. Okay, but we can't at this point. So I, I'm guessing that the only thing he could do if he wanted to go to planning and zoning and talk to them, but I'm not sure that that's a, a, an avenue. I, well, it's up, to, it's up to the board to make a decision on whether or not this is an actual violation of the regulations and to uphold the notice of violation, right. <laughs> simply to uphold the regulations as they stand. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, just so you understand, that's the only thing we can do is follow the regulations in front of us because we don't have regulation power. Right. Only planning and zoning does. I mean, it's obvious that $150 a day while I'm worrying about this is obscene. And again, you'd have to take that back to the town council, right. and they would have to talk to you so about So my worry those. is the meantime. Right. The problem that's sitting Which is in why front I was of us is for more time, yeah. we are strictly here. Whatever's written in the rules, we can't change them, and we can't vary them. So now what? I would suggest that you may want to, after this meeting or, or tomorrow or something like that, sit down and talk to the uh, staff and talk about what what is possible and what isn't, okay? But it's, it's outside our purview to be able to do any of that. So okay. th this board can't grant a variance or an exception to a rule no, in any way? Yeah. We're not allowed to. That's not, that's not part of our rule. I'm sorry, but we, uh, it's just... Uh, you're, you're gonna. I, I, I think the best thing is to discuss it and talk about what options you have. Mm -hmm. Doing it here is not. Is not. This was just the route that I was told to take Lori first. Something, Lori. Right. I, I, just for clarification, so you are here tonight for the zoning enforcement action. You're, you've appealed that action. The only thing that this board may do this evening is act on that appeal, whether they agree with it or not. You, you have the right to come back with a variance application should you prove that you have a hardship. And we could work with you as to what a hardship is. Because it's, it's not just because I want it or, or you know, it fits in my family. It's, there are very specific. So we could work with you on that. Other than that, um, you know, it's going back to planning and zoning. So, so it's just, you, you need to understand that all of these commissions have very specific purviews and tonight, this commission may only act on the appeal because you have not made an application for a variance. Well, I wish I would, was told that initially when I went in and spoke with planning. I believe you were. I, I don't recall being told that I needed to. I was actually told that I shouldn't bother trying to change the wording because it was near impossible. And that might be true as well. But well, you have every right to try. Fair either. Yeah. So I just wanted to clarify what the purview this evening was. So what do we do now? We end up voting on the cease and desist, however that comes out. The only application, she's already given you the other avenue that if sure, you I, I go I'll for go a variance, planning, correct. keeping in mind that a variances are very hard to get, so we don't want to give you any false hope, you just mm -hmm. got to go through the process, and that this, and I know from watching z planning and zoning, they went through a lot of effort to put together a chicken variance so that it's across town. Anyone who's got those minimums. Yeah, I understand the amount of work that must have gone into something that, you know, is a, is a town-wide ordinance. I, right. I understand that. So variances are very specific. So if you talk to Lori, 
So right now, the only thing we can do is vote on it per the rules in front of us. Sure. Okay. This is a question. Who are you talking to? Him? Yes. Them? Well, the chair <laughs> first. Okay. Um, would we be able to table this without prejudice to give him time to go back? No, we were not. We're here tonight specifically on the cease and desist. Okay. So we vote on that. Then he can go back to the planning zoning and take the next step. That's it's it's, an, it's the ball's put back in his court. Which I don't have a problem with. I don't I don't I don't mind taking the lead and trying to continue this. My worry is what happens to my pets until then. We can't answer that. Yeah. They're not going to come. I can guarantee what you're going to find is that the zoning enforcement officer isn't showing up with a cage. Okay, so tomorrow morning, let's get through this part first, and then tomorrow, take next step two. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. If I can, just for clarification, so what was issued was a notice of violation. You can appeal any order that is issued by us. In this matter, it was a notice of violation. The next step would be a cease and desist order. Even with a cease and desist order, if someone is going to try to remedy the situation, we give we put a stop on that time period. They have 10 days to file an appeal or seek another remedy. Uh, so we would do the same thing in this matter, you know, but if, if he's going to go ahead, I mean, obviously it can't go on for months or anything like that. It would have to make a determination as to what route he wants to go, either try for a variance or try for a text change, but that's with planning and zoning. So you have to make that decision. I'm Don't hoping for a text change. That's what I'm hoping for, is to change the allotted land size. Well, if, if that's the case, then there's a special application that you have to fill out, special use application to go before for a text change. And uh, that would be heard by the Planning and Zoning Commission. And it's until that's heard, then as long as we know that you're moving forward with some sort of remedy, to it, and there's no guarantee that that is going to be approved for a text change. Right. Just so you understand that. No, I'm aware that there's always that so, chance. So that's the avenue. If that's what you want to do, we'll help you with the form to fill out and the avenue to take. Yes. Okay. That's what he's telling you. So if I'm hearing you correctly, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that if, if um, Mr. Scalzo is, is going to go forward with this and go through the proper channels to get this either one of those two changes, the text or the variance, apply for that, fill out the forms and so on, then the daily fee would be held in advance? Yeah, there won't be any fines levied at this point in time as long as he's making an effort to try to rectify the situation. Okay. If, if I may, just a question just for my knowledge. <clears throat> the, this board or planning and zoning or the work that you do, are we under the purview of the Fair Housing Act, the Federal Fair Housing Act or the ADA? Because we received this letter from uh, Dr. Haynes. Well, I'd, I'd like to go on record right now that we didn't request that rec that letter, mm -hmm. first of all. Mm -hmm. And I kind of would not like to delve into that too, too much, uh, just because of HIPAA situation and everything else. That's a good point. So um, as for the only uh, animals that are recognized by the ADA are service animals, which are dogs, and oddly enough, miniature horses. Um, but those are the only two animals that are recognized as uh, service animals. Um, even with uh, animals for emotional support, there's limitations even with the airlines, with some of the airlines. It's, it's up to them what they choose to allow and what they don't choose to allow. In this case here, it wouldn't apply anyways. Okay. All right, thank you for clarifying that. Mr. Rochelle, uh, am I correct in saying that uh, it, we have to still carry out our part of this, which is to uh, 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 vote on this particular item? Um, is it correct that he can't move forward unless we actually have that vote? So he, this is one step he has to take. Is that correct. correct. Yeah, you would have to vote either to uphold the, the violation or, or not uphold my motion on my uh, notice of violation. Okay. Any other questions? We'll call. We have to make a motion and the whole thing. It's not a hearing, but yes, you have to go. No, this is not a public hearing. So I'm going to um, uh, make. I need a motion to close the. Uh, well, 
motion to close? Second. All those in favor? Raise your hand. Okay. Lori, did you give me a motion sheet in this packet uh, on this one? I didn't put the packet together, so. I, I make a motion to, we do it in the positive, Lori. Yes, please. I make a motion to uphold the zoning enforcement's um, cease and desist order. It's on a cease and desist. It's a violation. 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 That's a violation. Well, That's a violation. I'm looking for the right words here, so hang oh, on a minute. Yep, good man. <laughs> Notice of violation. Second. Did I actually do that in the right order? No. Okay. Motion. Yes. So now you go to your part. Yes. No, I'm just on. Uh, it shouldn't deposit. That right. So okay, to, if you vote it, yes, it's a, you're upholding his violation. If you vote no, you're against his violation. Is that you want to make sure we have that right? So a yes vote upholds the CEO. A no vote okay. denies the CEO. Very okay. Good. Yeah. Any other discussion? Let's move the question. Oh, let's uh, vote. Can I have a roll call vote, please? Tim Neville. Yes. Mary Ann Turner. Yes. Kelly Davis. Yes. Charlie Masterverdi. Yes. Rick Stroney. Yes. Unanimous. Unfortunately, that's what, that's where we, we're at. And I hope you understand. And I hope you follow through and go see the uh, the staff and follow through with the pieces that you just uh, said you were. Looking forward to and you understand that everything is tabled now. There are no fines. It's all Yeah, I, I understand. It's okay. just put so on you don't need longer. to be concerned about that at the moment. That's that's big and I appreciate that. Okay. Okay Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you I have a motion to um, rec uh, to approve the uh, minutes of January 23rd, I, 2023. I didn't attend, but I did see a correction. On page three, one, two, three, four, the fifth paragraph down, tr it has a tracker instead of tractor. That's why. <laughs> First sentence, fifth paragraph. Yeah. Is it? Should be tractor trailer, yeah. We're talking about the trailers. Okay. Okay. I second with the amended change. Any discussion? All those in favor of the amended change, please signify by raising your hand. It's unanimous. And back to the original motion. Approved the minutes as amended. Is there a second? A second. Oh, okay. As amended. Okay. Thank you. So all those in favor? Raise your hand. Okay. Um, correspondence and staff reports. Do we have anything? Correspondence? No. Okay. I just want to, did you want to mention anything about the March? Or are we going to have a meeting? No, we sure. won't. I, I could uh, bring that up. Uh, the March 23rd public hearing on the plan of conservation and de development will be held here. Come in and uh, speak for or against, or if you have any comments, you can email me at lwhitten at enfield.org. Is our meeting canceled then? Or? No, the PLCD. No. Okay, wrong one. And then March 11th, we have that uh, class. I, like. is yes. the, that's the Saturday that's class the, with that's the, the, Saturday class the Connecticut Bar. Yep. Yeah. March and the 11th. last thing is March 23rd is the AquaTurf. Yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we have a, we have a few opportunities. If you haven't signed up, sign up. Sign up early. And yes. Get your tickets. And get your exactly. credit journey. That's great. Any other business? Um, Mr. Chairman, yeah. um, just an, if we had an update for the auto sales location on Enfield Columbia Drive, sales cars. Yeah. Any update on that? We're uh, excuse me. still dealing with the issue. Um, they have uh, not filed any of the required special permit. That has not been filed yet. And uh, I guess the next step in action would be 
full blown cease and desist? I believe the cease and desist was already issued. I'm I just off my memory. Next, next issue would be citations. Okay. Are they incurring fees right now as a result of that continued operation no. or no? No. Not, as, not until I actually issue a citation. Is there a reason? We're not pursuing this because technically they're running a business without an auto, auto license. I, I also have a call into the motor vehicle department regarding that. Can we make it something that through the chair? No. I think it's we need to dip this, get this taken care of. <laughs> it's been going on for a long time. Long time. And they're advertising. They're Did advertising you? them? Oh, I didn't oh yeah, see they that. advertise I didn't see in the local. If you look and go local, it's advertised every month. Every month. Okay. I'll, so try to take care of it by the end of the week, one way or the other. What? what uh, just a question. What? What is it, do you hope to get from the uh, motor vehicle department in terms of you reach out to them? Actually, close them down. I mean, they have much more okay, power fine. than I do. That's what I was looking for. Okay. And the only choice we have then is to give them a citation and charge them a daily fee. $150 a day for the violation, and they can appeal that. And if they don't go through with the appeal from a hearing officer, then we get into the situation where we have to go to the town attorney for some sort of action. Okay. So the, so the next one is, what's the word? It's a violation? Citation. Citation. He's had a uh, notice of violation. He's had the cease and desist and hasn't done anything, I assume. It's been going on okay, forever. Okay, going on forever. And so now the next well, one. Well, he, he got the approval and he got the PNZ approval and he got that under a special use permit, which he hasn't filed as of yet. Right. Well, because he, he had an opportunity to come in for his case seven, and he had, and he didn't do it, and we even reached out to him. That's okay. correct. Well, let's see what we can do. And the fees start once you issue the citation. They're not retroactive to. No, they would start the date of uh, receipt by him. Okay. Um, I hope you uh, you I have friends down at the uh, motor vehicle department that can help us out here. Whatever. At least that they'll hear our case. Well, the I'll handle it by the end of the week, one way or the other. Sounds great. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the issue at hand is not the fact that the company is it, not, that we don't want them to do business no, here. It's not at all that. It's, never been. it's the fact that we have a business not following the rules, not doesn't have a license, and it only you don't want this no. to perpetuate. I, so I, I, I agree. How long has it been? Six months? Oh, God. Oh, no. no. No, longer than that. Longer than that. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> We're going into a, better than yeah, a year. A little right. more than a year, yeah. Yeah, and I have to go back into my book because I <laughs> that, don't sit here. Better than a year? Yeah. And that predates you, I believe. Yes, it oh, did. De de no, oh, you've been on the commission for a year now. So. Here, I've got February. I want to say it was, yeah. Yeah, I've got, I'm, here's a note from t uh, February of 22. Okay. Okay, so and I'm sure if I go back, I'll st I'll still it's still open as of July 22. Mm -hmm. These are from my notes. I'll see if I can take care of it within the year. All right. You're good. So I have something uh, through the chair that I'd like to talk about about the case sevens at the legislature. Um, I did send it out to you, so you all saw it. Um, we were we d I was I did testify. Um, it was very interesting because. I don't think the legislators understand what a K-7 is and how it impacts the town. Mm -hmm. And the goal, and, my, and remember, I'm only speaking as me, not yeah. you, but I'm just telling you about it. And the, the bottom line to the K-7 application or the license is that, in my view, it needs to go to planning and zoning so planning and zoning can do the review. And, and you don't, it shouldn't come to ZBA with just a rubber stamp, which we have no conditioning power. And that's where we get into a jam, the no conditioning power. And then uh, last year, if you remember, they wanted to say, well, let the CEO do it. And I said, no, he doesn't have conditioning power either. The only comp group that does is planning and zoning. Let them do their job. So I know, Rick, you watched it, and I think Kelly did Kelly's, too. Yeah. Um, they were very receptive and they actually heard me. I actually got a couple of texts later. Now, if it gets out of committee, I haven't heard that yet. So we'll just keep going. But I will tell you, it was interesting to see the other side, you know, the, that because I was the only one, it was odd. It, was I against it or for it? It was weird how they wrote it. You know, if you read the what they said, you couldn't figure out which way they were going and they had uh, skinny down the legislation so much it made no sense. 
And so there were co there were people coming in to speak on it, and I read their testimony, and I was like, "You guys are still on the wrong page. It's not. We need to protect the town." So anyway, just so you know, I got nothing to do. I'm staying on it. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, th uh, may I ask, Marianne, did did anybody speak for it to keep it no. as is? Well, that's the problem, Lori. The bill, the language that was put in front of the. Uh, committee was literally didn't say anything great <laughs> until i read the testimony that was on file for it i then i only knew how the outside world besides me was reacting so it was like well wait a minute i'm kind of agreeing with them so am i against it or for it it was very weird but i'm not lying that the, i could send you to you if you want to read it it said nothing at least a year before they were saying, we're going to turn it over to the CEO. That's a suggestion. They went and they had a whole dialogue on it. What I found out that was most interesting about it is people were referring back to that legislation, even though there wasn't really a bill or anything. It never got out of committee. And they just wrote this paragraph. It was just very odd, but typical politician-y stuff. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that you do go there and testify. Um, the CCAPA, the Connecticut Chapter of American Planning Association, has been trying to have this changed for years, and it just never goes anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere, but it I'm going to keep at it. We're, we're trying to figure out who's fighting this. <laughs> I don't know, and it's it's almost <laughs> as if what I really realized at, when I talked to the legislators, they don't understand it. They don't understand why the K-7 is so vital and important and why it's not should not be in the ZBA's bucket because we can't do anything. It truly really seemed like Commissioner Turner was teaching them what really <laughs> happens behind the scenes with the way some of them reacted. If you right. haven't seen the testimony. Good. And Maybe I even said to them, yeah. they also, it was like I says, well, do you understand abandonment? And they're like, no. Oh, like, well, let me tell you why that's a problem. <laughs> but how it related to the K-7, yeah. you know. But I was pretty pleased to see that new condition off subject now. I'm um, planning and zoning the other night, uh, the new condition about abandonment. Oh, yes. Yeah, so yes, I think that's yeah. that's a great idea. Um, standard what, conditions for that. Yeah, just for, so, do you want to tell them what it is? Because I'm talking, uh, they're like, what are you talking well, about? Well, uh, uh, they were talking about non-conforming uses. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, we're going to make... Actually, we're going to make a condition of approval for nonconforming uses to, that, to state that this now ceases any nonconforming use on the site. So you can't go back and, and ask for this again now that you've abandoned it. So. Right. So remember when we got jammed up yep. Yep. and it goes back to the 60s, this condition would stop it. And it would have happened technically, if I understand this. Once it stopped being a tire store and it became the electronic store, if we had had that rule in our conditions, anything that had mm -hmm. happened behind mm -hmm. would have been would have been gone. And yeah. when it came in front of us, they wouldn't have. They would have had to go for a site review, which would have brought a planning and zoning, which would have solved all the problems that consist that are going on. Did I have that right? So pretty good. Yeah. Kudos, guys. Yeah. Glad well, to see good. we have an opportunity. One for the good guys. Yeah. It was Pleasure. well the the, the, no, the, the I, committee, the the office did it. So I'm great. glad we hadn't thought I wish we had thought about it sooner. But better late than never. <laughs> any, well any other business before we go? Motion Probably. to adjourn. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Aye. Okay. Envelopes. 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 Envelopes.